Hello, George. Nice to meet you. I am Amanda from Guide for Moms. This is my site and Crazy Amanda Reacts on YouTube. And thanks for meeting with me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Glad to be here. Now let's let's begin. Tell me a little bit about well, yourself and, and especially about your new show. Uh, well, yeah, the show is called uh, George Goes Everywhere. It is on millionstories.com. And uh, it's the show where we uh, explore a city and see as much as we can all without spending more than $100. Uh, wow. And uh, it's a show um, I've always loved to travel. Um, haven't always had the, the bankroll for it. And so it was kind of uh, born out of my own personal experiences. Uh, and, you know, I've uh, worked in TV here in, in Southern California for uh, many years. And so uh, at a certain point, it kind of made sense to combine my, uh, these two aspects of my life, the travel and the, the television and, and make a show like this. Awesome. I, I'm telling you, travel is the one thing I am missing this past year, so missing. So, well, where, where did you get the idea? Like, where did, where did this original, I mean, cause you know, I've always like get some ideas in my head, but never follow through. <laughs> so actually to follow through and start doing this. Uh, well, I started doing it on my own uh, before I worked with, before Million Stories and I uh, uh, hooked up. We, uh, I was doing it on my own personal YouTube channel for years. Um, and it all started, I, I mean, I used to be a, a frequent flyer miles uh, expert kind of and use those to fly, get uh, cheap flights, cheap hotels all over the world. And, uh, you know, just um, there was... What, what it really started was, I mean, I made a show called Rich Travel, Poor Travel, um, where I used frequent flyer miles to fly someplace like a rich man. And then once I was on the ground, I had to explore the city on a budget like a poor man. And uh, just kind of when I was doing that, I'm like, this is kind of funny. I was just in first class two hours ago. Now I'm in a hostel. Uh -huh. And you know, what, what happened? And it just seemed really funny. And uh, so I, I decided to make a vid videos focusing on that. and it all kind of uh, led to million stories once they found we're looking for someone to make content focused on budget travel. It was really just a, a perfect match. So that's, that's was actually my next question. So great follow up on that is um, how exactly did you get into, you know, collaborating with million stories? Uh, it was uh, just a, a friend of a friend, um, an old uh, TV writer, a, a coworker of mine. Um, I was a writer on the show Mike and Molly, if you remember that uh, yeah. series. A uh, mm -hmm. friend of mine who was also a writer on the show, a uh, friend Bill, knew someone at Million Stories and they said, hey, do you know of uh, a, um, you know, someone who makes videos, uh, you know, a, a you know, younger millennial type who makes videos? And he says, you know what, as a matter of fact, I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, you know, like so many stories, how, how do people get jobs? A friend recommends you, you know? Sure. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I... I it was, it was a good fit once we got uh, together and yeah, I, I bought Bill a bottle of wine for that one. He, he... <laughs> well, let's get into the, the nitty gritty of it because I want to hear about all the destinations and all the travel stuff you did. And, you know, the first episode I watched was New Orleans, of course, because I was born originally there. Now, first, how difficult is it to stay under the $100 budget? I know you said like in your little intro that you do research beforehand, but how actually difficult because I could have spent that hundred dollars in New Orleans just on trying all the food. <laughs> well, it, I mean, it varies city by city. Uh, certainly uh -huh. harder in New York was a little trickier. I will, I will admit. Um, but it, you know, it's sometimes you have to make tougher decisions. Um, you know, in terms of like New Orleans and the food, I mean, I, I pretty much everywhere with the food. I go. I don't go to high end restaurants necessarily. I keep it more, uh, to, you know, street food, more hole in the wall type places. Um, and just you know, sometimes you can't do everything you want. Uh, you have to make those tough decisions sometimes. But usually, in any city you go to, I didn't have that much trouble doing it. I don't think. I think. If, uh, if you're creative, you can pull it off. 
Well, you said your research beforehand. Do you get, you know, talk to people that you know that might have been there or recommendations actually once you get, or it's planned? I mean, you only have $100, so you have to like plan it well. Um, I do. I try to plan as much as I can, which is not to say that I'm, uh, that I don't uh, wing it as well, because um, that's part of the fun of traveling is winging it, yeah. you know? Uh, so I'm not super uh, on the rails there. Uh, but I, I like plan as much as you can, but also leave uh, space for, for winging it. I like talking to like Uber drivers, cab drivers. Uh, there's a couple places in the show that were recommended to me specifically by uh, Uber drivers. Uh, the restaurant I went to in Houston was an Uber driver who turned me on to it. And so went there and it was awesome. Uh, and yeah, so just, you know, Plan as much as you can, because that's a big part of it. Um, but leave yourself room to explore. And has there been any place where you just fell in love with, where you were like, okay, I'm gonna have to come back and have a budget bigger than a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for Chicago. I'll admit, um, I've been there before, but uh, I just, something about that city, it's, uh, I just love it. Every time I go, I kind of can't wait to return. That's all. I'm a Midwest person now. Born in New Orleans, but I live in St. Louis now. So I understand that when it's only a five hour drive and I've been there many a times. Yeah. Which, yeah. which kind of begs the question, uh, what cities are you planning in the future? Are you, I mean, St. Louis, we have a lot of free stuff to do here. So that's just some suggestions. <laughs> I've actually heard that about St. Louis. Yeah, that, you're not the first person to tell me that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, they do. It's really because we have like the zoos free, the science center. And, and I already saw from your Chicago video that you like uh, baseball. <laughs> I, I do. I want to go to, I've not been to uh, Bush Stadium. I, I, I want to go to all 30 major league parks. I've been to 19 of them okay. so far. But uh, there's huge, I got to do like a Midwest road trip because there's all, a lot of the Midwest parks I have not been to yet. So uh, have you, during the pandemic, have you been planning some of the next destinations to go to? I mean, you've doing, been doing some research. It's hard to really plan uh, yeah. too much uh, these days with everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I definitely want to, uh, if, if we can make more episodes in the future, hit, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, Portland, Seattle, uh, maybe even Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, if we get into Canada. Um, and yeah, Midwest, St. Louis. Uh, so George wants to go worldwide now. You're ready to take it beyond the U.S. cities. You're ready to go worldwide. Sure, you know, <laughs> Canada is not exactly worldwide. So. Pretty close, but... <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> I'll, 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 go, I'll go. I'll go wherever. Uh, there's no place I don't want to go. Ever. I kind of want to go everywhere. Yeah. Isn't it? Where's your dream destination, George? <laughs> I mean, I I kind of want to go to New Zealand, mm. but uh, they're they're shut down right now. We'll see what the few the the months ahead hold. So, has there been any destination that has really surprised you? Um. I think one of the places that surprised me actually was Milwaukee. Uh, I don't know if you, have you been to Milwaukee? I have, and only for like a half a day. Okay, it. I, I, I was surprised because it's one of the smaller cities that uh, I went to on this show, but there was it's one of the longest episodes, if not the longest episode, I believe, because there was just a lot to do, and and everyone we reached out to was very courteous and. Uh, welcoming to uh, us shooting there and um it's just you know a lot of a lot of fun and i'm i'm a sucker for you know they have you know german influence there i'm a sucker for beer and and sausage and pretzels and stuff like that and cheese uh that's that's right up my alley so i was uh i was a, an easy mark for milwaukee yeah, and I think when I went, did they, I didn't check out, I'm gonna have to watch your Milwaukee episode. Did you go to the brewery, they had a, is it Schlafly's Brewery? I went to uh, the Hof, Hofbrau uh, Brewery, where they had, um, have you ever heard of Hammerschlagen? No. <laughs> it's a game, it's a big stump of wood 
and you buy nails and you and you take turns with a hammer hammer it's like an old i get german drinking game or something but they have this game called hammerschlagen and i never heard of it and uh i was talking to people in milwaukee i'm like yeah i'm going to play uh this game this stumble with it like oh yeah hammerschlagen yeah i'm like how have i never heard of this i've never either is it in your episode oh yeah yeah i'm gonna have to watch that (laughs) uh, yeah go ahead go ahead or no, there, and I went to um, the place. I, I, if you watch uh, Green Bay Packers games, you know those cheese heads they wear. Mm-hmm. I went to the factory where they make the cheese heads, and I was able to make my own. You can so you can pour the 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 mixture in there into the mold and all that. And you, mm-hmm. it's wonderful. It's, one, of my, one of my favorite. It's places. not really cheese, is it? No, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a foam of some kind. So you really kind of go off the beaten paths when you go to a lot of these destinations. Try to. I mean, uh, I, you know, dig dig deeper than the the you know first page of Google results. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's not to say that I don't go to normal places. I mean, uh, or you know, not normal, but uh, you know, more popular places. Um, but you know, go. Uh, Dig, dig deeper, see what you can find, the, the off the beaten path stuff. What, one of the things I love hearing more than anything is people who have lived in a city for their whole life or for decades, and they watch the episode and they say, I've never heard of half of that stuff. And I'm like, yes, that means I hit my mark. And, and you did that, look, it's funny they mentioned it, you did that for me, because when I was watching the New Orleans one, how did I not know that they had you know, a bar where you can wash your clothes at? How did you even find that? They're they're all over New Orleans. I couldn't believe it. That that was just one of the bars that have laundromats in them. They're everywhere. That is funny. I've never heard of it, and I'm I'm telling you, I grew up there. I can't believe it. I I was blown away. I was looking at. I'm like, oh, a laundromat in a bar. That's interesting. Then I kept researching. I'm like, wait, another one, and another one. What? This is a thing there. Now, where did you grow up? Because that that is one thing that you know living somewhere sometimes you don't realize what you actually have to in the city you know so where you said you're living in southern california now right i live in los angeles now but i grew up uh in new jersey a few miles outside new york city okay because well i was just going to say like where you're living or where you grew up was are there places that you suggest you know for something under a hundred (laughs) dollars i don't know if there's any place in la (laughs) The uh, stuff you can you can find it. We haven't done a proper episode here. I've done some uh, exploration on my own. You know, I uh, I have some ideas. You know, I I, I, one of the things I also kind of like to think about is if a a place that would be good for the show is is the kind of place that would be good for like a second or third date. Like, is this kind of quirky, kind of interesting? but also cheap and, you know, being uh, a single man living in an expensive city like Los Angeles, that has uh, come come in handy for me. Awesome. I think I keep checking at the time. So I wanted to get at least one more question to you. I got time. And, and it, okay, well, what have you had to pass on that, you know, you just couldn't afford in the budget? Oh, um, Couple of th- I think there was um, in in Atlanta. I was hoping to go to a Braves game, yeah. uh, like getting back to my baseball mm-hmm. uh, thing. That was not not in the cards. Um, I think there were a couple places in Dallas. Dallas, we had some. We had to get a little creative with Dallas. Uh, there was, I think, the Fort Worth Stockyards is a place we wanted to go. I don't think that was quite working out, or like the. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dallas Cowboys Stadium. I want to do a tour there. A lot of the sports stuff, huh? <laughs> the sports stuff, you get, I got it in the Chicago episode. I went to a Cubs game in the Chicago episode. So I was able to get I saw it. that. That was almost all your budget. I know. <laughs> yeah, worth it. Worth it. Those Wrigley rooftops. I know you're you're in St. Louis, but uh, Wrigley rooftops are worth a visit. <laughs> well, if you are ever in come by in St. Louis, definitely. Give me a ring because I will show you around. I will look. I mean, we're gonna do it in a fifty dollar budget, George. We're gonna <laughs> hit St. Louis. We're gonna we're gonna try to be the cheapest area that you hit. <laughs> hey, sounds good to me.
And thank you for taking the time out to talk with me. And I'm excited now to go watch more episodes. I'm definitely next one I'm going to check out is Milwaukee. Great. I appreciate that. And thanks for having me.